Hi, this is Joseph Williams, son of John Williams, and you are watching the Nerf Herder Council. What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. I am your host, JT. We are live on Facebook and YouTube, not only our page and channel, but that of the virtual cantina network real quick before we get rolling don't forget speaking of the virtual cantina network uh there might be some bad language during this episode and the views of the nerf herder council don't necessarily reflect those of the virtual cantina network aj why are you interrupting my monologue uh as usual guys we are brought to you by audible go to audibletrial.com forward slash nhc for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download don't forget if you are watching on youtube either on our channel or that of the virtual cantina network click that like button click that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so that you are notified every time we go live if you would like to get customizable nerf herder council swag just go to shop.nerfherdercouncil.com that is literally the only place on the planet where you can get your very own chewbacca's family t-shirt or sweatshirt or coffee mug or whatever the hell you want and if you guys are looking for virtual cantina network swag which kicks ass you can go to tpublic.com forward slash user forward slash virtual dash cantina so now uh without further ado let me bring him back onto the show uh don't ever click into my monologue again uh how are you doing i didn't mean to click into your monologue i just lost every usb device i had this setup is awesome we're so professional well i, I okay like i i really i really need to be clear on this i have told you for years to get a good setup that works and don't fucking touch it you haven't done it. I have. And magically, you are always the one with the problem. Well, if our Patreon took off a little bit more, I could buy a computer with more than two USB ports, and then I wouldn't have to have a dock that likes to come unplugged at the wrong time. So I don't I don't want to hear that crap. Are you kidding look, me? It's not it's not a problem, dude. We just need like 650 more Patreon subscribers at the three dollar level, and I will be golden. You doubled my cost for this show monthly without even asking and i'm not the one pimping out patreon i just absorb the cost and you're sitting there bitching about needing a new computer that by, by the way by the way mr i need a mac mr technological everything mr manager international manager who does a computer job if you don't have a good fucking computer that is your fault we're off okay, and running just... on the nerf herder council <laughs> Well, let's get to scintillating some introduction. How are you doing tonight, JT? <laughs> I'm doing awesome, man. I'm a little high strung. Uh, it, 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 the Masters begins tomorrow morning, but I've already been watching uh, all of yesterday morning and all of today. So I'm pumped up. It's it's a, it's emotional. Like, you know, bring up something real quick. It's it's, it's definitely going to be an emotional four days for me because, you know, as we talked about, you know, our dad passed you know, about three months ago, almost at this point. And my thing with him was golf and the masters was the event. And so this is my first masters in 41 years that I will not be watching with him or talking about it with him. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little keyed up. I'm, I'm nervous. I, I'm, I'll be completely honest. I'm, I'm not going to get all weepy, but I'm not doing very well with it at all, but I'm excited because it that is the most the uh, Augusta background. Yes. I was wondering about that. Yep. This is, this is the iconic 12th hole. Uh, at Augusta National. Uh, I'm in corner, so here we go. Uh, let's get to some comments here. So, Horsehead. <laughs> that's such a great... What's up, man? Live and in color. I'm here for the cussing. <laughs> oh, my God. Greg Wareham. What's up, man? My good buddy Greg from Billy Like Soda. I feel like your post was translated into a foreign language. <laughs> I, it it might have just been translated into Oribesh due to the cursing, Greg, I think. Uh, Kale McLeish. Awesome to see you as always, man. John's back to wearing a hat. Hope this isn't a result of the last talking into infinity. No, I just I haven't been doing my hair. Kale it sounds like a, a very like like wimpy thing to say, but um I have really bad sunburn. Uh Show I, it. I play, yeah. All right. Well, well, I'm going to so <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm on a roll. It's time to go solo. So um I'm going solo, so do that new fancy thing, AJ. Here we go. So yeah. So as you can tell, I was wearing a snapback hat uh, on Monday for the eclipse. My, ba my band played a show on top of a parking garage in Lima, Ohio, 
And my dumb ass wasn't even thinking about the sun or, you know, uh, you know, sunscreen or any of those sorts of things. And as a result, that's what you get. And uh, so I, you know, using the using the blow dryer like burns the shit out of my skin. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's a hat. I, I, I could take the beating. I, I, I can take the beating where my hair is concerned, Kale. Don't worry. But, um, God, dude, that is that is like the worst sunburn I've ever seen. Like, you might as well have had a dick like in suntan lotion, like done into your head or something. <laughs> I've had worse. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, um, yeah, other than I'm excited for the Masters. Um, you and I had a really goddamn good time this past Saturday. Uh, my stepson Dom turns 23 today, uh, but we went out for dinner uh, to celebrate him uh, this past Saturday, and then AJ came back to my place, and it was uh, myself, my wife Steph, and my two stepkids, and we ended up uh, sitting there just drinking, doing shots, and playing some some of that Jackbox uh, stuff on, on PlayStation, and uh, it got uh, to a dark place. That game took us. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but... um. Yeah, we were a little offensive. We we decided let's see how offensive we can be, and uh, oh boy, did we succeed! But we had a great time, man. It was it was it was it was a lot of fun. Celebrated my stepson, and you know it's been, it's been a good several days. And um, looking forward to tonight. Looking forward to tonight. Um, the the question the question here is AJ. Mm -hmm. Before we before we get into tonight's topic. We can either go spoiler for today's episode, or we cannot go spoiler for today's episode. Tough. Um, I think we can go spoiler free. There's not a whole lot that needs discussed about today's episode for the rest of the conversation to make sense. Well, I say that we we let. <laughs> I just happen to have a chance cue here. <laughs> we'll let fate decide. So. I, I have a random number generator pulled up, and I say that if it's an even number, spoiler. If we odd number, no spoilers. Fair. All right. So let's do it. I wish we had a drum roll, but we don't. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's do it. Here we go. Oh, it's 81. No spoilers for today's episode. Okay. Cam McLeish, thank you, man. Thank you for wishing Dom a happy birthday. That's awesome, man. Love you, dude. All right. So we will not be giving spoilers for today's episode of The Bad Batch. So we'll lay off of that. By okay. the way, uh, speaking of spoilers, I, I accidentally completely screwed over a good friend at work. A huge Star Wars buddy. And he, a couple weeks ago, I hadn't seen the last two episodes. And he was like, spoilers or no spoilers? I'm like, no, 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 don't spoil. Like, I'm, I'm not a spoiler guy. Mm -hmm. So he was super cool about it. So this morning he hits me up and he says, and I didn't catch the first part of his message. He said, I'm one or two episodes behind, but how do you feel about a certain someone coming back and blah, 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 doing all this stuff? And I said, oh, dude, Cad Bane? Like, hell yeah, man. Like, you know. Oh, hell. no. And he goes. No, I meant Ventress. I told you I was one or two episodes behind. I was like, oh, my God, I just spoilered the guy who purposely didn't spoiler me. <laughs> I felt like oh, such an dude, ass. That's, that's bad karma, man. That's going to come it, back to bite you in the ass. It is, man. It's it's bad juju. It's bad juju. So, <laughs> yeah. So that was my Star Wars karma for the day. Um, And at the end of the show, I have a very quick question to see if the chat has an opinion. And one for you. It, it, okay. it revolves. It's a total non sequitur, so I'm not even bringing it up till the end of the show. But um, I don't do sports betting at all. I don't do gambling at all. The only thing I gamble on is the Masters, and I'm wondering what my strategy should be because I have two two schools of thought. So I just want like a quick, just a goofy at the end of the show, like two minute thing. So obviously that's an hour from now. So enough screwing you might around. As well, asked me to fill out your March Madness bracket. I have no insight on that whatsoever. Well, dude. It's, it's it's liter, but it's literally just a. Th it's like what theory do I go with? Like what what should my strategy? Not who who should I bet on this that and the other? It's like no, like I can do this or I can do this. Which one do you think is better? So no one gives a shit about that. At the end of the show, when people are tuning out, I'll bring it up. So 
<laughs> See, Kale's on. Kale, there we go. Kale's on point. Well, I suggest a new strategy. Let the Wookie win. I man, you guys, these guys are the best. <laughs> Horsehead, <laughs> spoiled by the spoilers. <laughs> All right, oh, so man. we are we are talking once again about Bad Batch season three. Um, mm -hmm. uh, real quick, Skip Ruckle. Tiger says he can win again. Tiger can barely walk. Uh, he's not sure he can make it through. 18 holes so tiger's full of crap skip <laughs> all right uh bad batch season three so i'm i'm going to fall back on what i've already said about this season it's excellent i i think it's some of the best story writing they've done and not just in in, in as as the as the season goes on now I'm, I'm i'm changing my opinion to saying not just i'm not comparing it just against the animated stuff but I think in live, I can compare it to live action stuff because it's getting that good for me. I, I'm like sucked in emotionally to a cartoon and it, it is, it's, it, it just, you know, it keeps building on itself. And I think at the very least it's, and again, I haven't gotten through all of the clone wars or much of it, mm -hmm. but I've gotten through most of everything else that's animated. At least that's, you know, storyline, not not like Tales of the Jedi that's kind of like sidebar shit. I'm going to say it is not only the best, but the best by far writing they've done in an animated property. I love it. I think it's amazing. Okay. L well, let me ask you a follow-up question then. Um, okay. What is it about the writing that hooks you so well? It, so there, there are so many times in the past, like – the stories, you know, I mean, we've talked before about how they have filler episodes and, and Bad Batch season two fell into that cat into that category. Obviously, we, we you know, ad nauseum, we've beaten that dead horse about rebels going into that that realm of just, you know, every other frickin episode is like, what's the point? But I think it's starting to become a, a question of dialogue. I, I'm noticing a lot of times where something will happen and you can kind of think, okay, he's going to say something cheesy here because that's what happens in a cartoon and has happened in the Star Wars cartoons, but it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Like the, the writing is getting much more mature and it's, it's getting, it, it makes a lot more sense, but it also at the same time is not taking away from the fact that it is a little bit more geared for children. Cause that is kind of what the animated stuff kind of goes for. And, I I think that they're they're perfectly balancing that line. I'm gonna challenge that actually. I'm gonna challenge okay. that this is written. I mean, okay, I guess. No, in fact, no. I'm just gonna say this is just Star Wars. This is not Star Wars written for children. Um, it's not. I don't think this is written for children any more than any live action series is written for children. I mean, we just had a couple of episodes where one of them didn't even have the Bad Batch in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was entirely just this imperial scientist having a shitty time of things and and dealing with children who didn't want to be there, who realized that they were captives. That's yep. dark, man. That is just straight up dark. Skip Ruckle completely agrees. He says, true that. I think I think I, I think I agree with you in that context as well. Um, What's really so. impressive, though, is that like we, we know what, what the larger stakes are as far as like what experiments they're doing at Tantus and, and what they're trying to achieve, but they've managed to keep the emperor out of it for the most part. And still like to your point, the quality of the writing is such that these individual character stories hit us so hard that the stakes feel like they're just as high as the entire galaxy being at war. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's even to the point where, you know, you're watching, you know, you know, today's episode, and no spoilers, but we know what characters are in it. Um, I realize, like, I'm sitting there. You're watching Hunter, Wrecker, and and Crosshair. I I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Hunter, Ricka, and Crosshair, um, running around. Whereas, you know, earlier in the season, it was Hunter, Wrecker, and and Echo. But then last Iker. season, yeah, Iker. And it, it like it keeps changing, and and there was a scene where the, where the three of them were running, you know, in, in you know 
today's episode. They're running towards whatever they got to do. And I'm thinking, God damn, like they have this amazing plan. You believe that they're going to kick ass, but there's still a lot of like, oh, my God, can they pull it off? But it's only three of the five. Mm -hmm. And it's not the three of the five that started the season. And it's not four of the five. It's, you know, and, you know, the, the whole emotional aspect of Crosshair coming back into the fold and him kind of being reintegrated. I mean, it, it, the writing is, is I mean, dude, it is brilliant. I wanted to ask you about that, actually. Okay. Um, I mean, Star Wars has a major problem with no one ever being truly dead. I mean, as long as we're <laughs> as long as we're not talking episode 12 spoilers, we can talk about the uh, the lightsaber wielder who came back. Right. Because you already you already talked about it earlier. So, yeah, you know, somehow Asajj Ventress came back from the dead. And of course, Darth Maul came back from the dead. Oh, oh, so oh I, I've I I I should have. Damn it. I just what I forgot to do. There's an explanation of how Ventress came back. And I think I remember it. So I will bring that up when we when it comes up but i my buddy yeah. today that i spoiled unfortunately explained it and it was a little it was from apparently it's canon so i think i have the explanation but anyway so you wanted okay. to ask me we'll come right back to that so based <laughs> on all the yeah exactly <laughs> chaos somehow ventress returned <laughs> nice sorry Dark anyway magic secrets only the sith knew um <laughs> anyway uh yeah so do you think that we're gonna see tick come back i <laughs> this show seems Man. to have real stakes i don't think they're gonna do that D dude I, i'm i am 150 percent on the fence about that because of what you just said like it's there are real stakes it is so emotional and aren't, aren't you just waiting every episode like when you feel like like there's going to be some big reveal it's going to be it's going to be tech. I'm sorry, tick. Um, right. Coming back. And yeah, so those, like those goggles were totally a plant. Those weren't the right. <laughs> those weren't the real ones or they may be, but he wasn't wearing them. Yeah. I mean, like it's I, I could see it going either way. I, I, I literally I, I'm not leaning either way. Do you want him to stay dead? Being truthful, no. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm the opposite. I'm going to say yes. Not that I didn't like the character, but it, it, this show has stakes. And like you said, it, now that one of them has been offed, it does seem like it's possible for any of them to be in peril. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, I, okay. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I don't, I don't disagree with that at all. Um, I, I just, in almost any other circumstance, I would actually be the guy who would say, no, keep him dead. But there's just something about the way they would do it in this that I think they would pull it off. And I think it might be kind of cool. Yeah, it's, it's Skip Ruckel. I, 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 yeah, I, I can't disagree. Skip Ruckel says it cheapens the death if he comes back. Uh, Kale McLeish, similar uh, you know, similar, similar sentiment. He says, you know, last night watching the new one, I actually said, you know what? Thank God tech's still dead. Otherwise this show would just not be as strong. Yeah, I, man, I, I do, I do want him to come back, but I'm fine if he doesn't. And I, I feel, I feel like they've done it other times where someone's dead. Oh, they're not dead. And it's <laughs> wait a minute. He's not dead. <laughs> He'll be still dead anymore. Um. Uh. Let's not mention that episode, even though it's the funniest thing we've ever done. Um. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. Like I I feel like they've done it before, and it's been just you know landed like a fart in church. But I mm -hmm. feel like for this show, they could pull it off. You know, like I really. And I don't know. There, there's just there's just something about the fact that it's a it's it's only three seasons. You know, Echo's been gone for now, like the better part. I mean, if you really kind of add it up. It's like, you know, close to, you know, at least three quarters of a season of the three. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Crosshair was pretty much, you know, gone for a lot of the time. I don't know. There's just something about if they're all there standing at the end that 
would kind of be awesome to me just from the concept of it, but also because I really feel like they've finally gotten into a groove with the writing to where they would do it and it would be cool. And I don't think it would cheapen the death. I mean, Skip and Kale, you guys are not wrong. I completely agree that that's usually what happens. 99 out of 100. I just feel like this is the one of 100 that they might actually be able to pull it off. Are you worried about the Ahsoka problem? What, that the show's going to turn into shit and just be live-action rebels and have fucking god-awful, stupid space fucking whales? No, I'm not at all. Next question. Okay, I, I was going to say the Ahsoka problem of, okay, well, if this person lived through this series of events, where the hell were they in the original trilogy? Um, hmm. That's a good question. I, I I don't think so because I think if you have the Bad Batch out there, I think there's still open storylines throughout the Star Wars universe. You know, as, as we're speaking right now, to where they could be brought back. So, you I, know, I I I was also not that big of a fan of of Tick. Anyway, I thought him and Ico were a little bit. Uh, redundant but i, I do um, get them confused i will <laughs> i will admit but you know what i will i will give them credit it's, it's the power of the writing again like there are moments with each of these characters that i can remember throughout all the seasons um one in particular with with tick um that hit me hard and i think i said this on our season three preview show where after our dad died there was i was watching that episode where they're mining for something on a planet and he's in a cave with Omega and um, they like he's, Oh yeah. He was, he was basically being standoffish about Chris here being um, stuck with the empire. And, <laughs> and she's like, how can you not you know feel something about this? And he's like, well, just because I don't react in a way that most people do doesn't mean I don't have feelings. And yeah. I'm like, wow, man. Cause you know, I've, I've been through, I've been through that in my own head. You know, since January, because I feel like, like you're processing normally and things are hitting you, and I'm just like, life goes on, buddy. It's all okay. <laughs> and I'm like, when is it going to hit me like a normal person? Because I should be more upset outwardly than I am. Um, and and so in that moment, in that scene, I was like, okay, this is cool. Like I I live my life through Star Wars stories to help me connect with people emotionally because. <laughs> Real life doesn't really hit me that way. <laughs> Look at Skip. Skip, he's on the spectrum. I think he is. <laughs> I think he is a little bit. <laughs> but I <Nice>. feel seen. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to get canceled for that comment, bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, the writing is fantastic. But, I, like I said, I, I think the show would be so much stronger if they just let the character be dead. I'm trying to think of animated deaths and who's actually like died and stayed dead. And Savage Opress is, I think, like the only one I can think of. This is going to be ignorant of me, but and Captain stuff... Tarples. Sorry, Grievous offs Captain Tarples in an episode of Clone Wars. <laughs> okay. There's one of those trivia questions. Is it Captain Tarples or the other guy? God damn it. Uh by the way, speaking of Van Halen, uh, or excuse me, trivia, uh, Van Halen trivia, I, I blew that. Never mind. Speaking of trivia, we speaking, win Star speaking, Wars trivia. Do it yeah. Speaking of trivia, we always win Star Wars trivia. I did Van Halen trivia against a bunch of Van Halen nerds the other night, and I actually won at least the first four rounds. The fifth round was all trivia about the show, and I only discovered the show like three weeks ago. But in the Van Halen rounds, I actually beat a bunch of other super nerds, and it was really difficult trivia. So I'm very proud of that. Anyway. Uh, back to your regu uh, regularly good. What the fuck is going on with me? Back to your regularly scheduled programming. Jesus Christ! All right, wow. let me help. Let me help you out. Okay, so let's let's talk about like what's going on in season three so far because we already yes. recapped one and two already. So season three, I feel like hit the ground running. Yes, like, I was actually surprised. Were you surprised at how quickly um, they escaped Tantus? Um, no. I, I, you know, I, I think, I think there's been a few things with this season that have gotten to the point a little quicker than you would expect, but also, but I think it's because they have to, 
you know, as soon as you announce, hey, it's the last season, like, okay, you can't really, you can't really screw around anymore. Like, let's get, you know, I mean, to quote one of our favorite movies, can you get to the point, shithead? Like, you know, like, so, um, <laughs> Kale, you can always just edit this part out for the audio version. John has had a stroke. <laughs> Kale, apparently so, man. It's the sunburn. I'm going to blame it on the sun. Um, yeah, I think, you know, they kind of have to get, you know, move along a little quicker. But by the same token, I also think they've kind of focused the story down a lot to where, you know, they they can jump from point to point a little quicker and it makes sense. True. There was a lot of speculation um, before the season started that the storyline of season three was going to be trying to get to Tantis to rescue her. Yeah. So I, I was actually kind of surprised it, 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 pl- it tracks for the character that she got out and got crosshair out. But I thought that would have been a cool, like alternate storyline, this whole thing of like, how do they get there and have a whole, like, was it 16 episodes, right? Have at least like so, eight yeah. of them be like, how the hell do we even find her? And you could have that's that's the way you could have those kind of like one off episodes where it's a self-contained little chapter. But it makes sense because it's one more step along the journey of this of this path of finding Mount Tantus to begin with, you know? Yeah, I but I agree with that. But but I think I, I think in the end, when we look at this show in totality, when you look at it as like, you know, three seasons, you're, I think it's going to be quite obvious. And I, I would be very surprised at this point if there are fans. I, I think I think the, the common ranking is going to be season three, season one, season two in terms of popularity. And I think there might be some argument to be made for season one, then season three, then season two. But season two is just kind of all over the map. You know, it's I enjoy very transitional. Yeah. Well, I enjoyed it, but it was like, what are we doing here? And as we've said many times, it, it just gets too close to that rebel shit of what what, what are we doing here? What's the point? But Whereas, it did have some really awesome episodes in it, though. So even the lows yeah. aren't that low. Well, well exactly. Are, oh, my God. Like the outpost. Remember that episode yes. where it was all mm-hmm. crosshair? And um, I forget the other clone's name. But but to their to your point, like they called back to that this season. You know, that, that snow covered base that they went to. Yep. was the same damn base that had been abandoned by the Empire after it was overrun. Yep. I was like, that is such an amazing detail. They didn't need to do that. But if you're paying attention, like, I love that, man. The people that are making this stuff, they just, they know their shit so well that they can write these things in there that it, and they do it in such a way that if you don't know the reference, you're not going to miss out on anything. Like The story makes sense anyway. But if you do, oh, it's so much better. Yeah. And that has to be such a hard, fine line to walk, you know? Well, and I, I, but I mean, we've talked about that with Mando, where it's, you know, if, if you're a huge Star Wars nerd, you can, you get into it and you notice all of the little Easter eggs and all that kind of stuff, right? But if you're not a huge nerd, you can still get into it because the story's that good and the characters are that interesting. So it's mm-hmm. like, I think they've gotten, they've gotten so good at doing that. You know, these writers, have walked that line in a, in just a fabulous fashion. It appeals to both sides of the fence, you know, the super fan or the casual fan, you know, they could both get into it. I mean, there's enough there for the casual fan. Whereas, you know, idiots like you and me like, Oh my God, you see that little thing from clone Wars season two, you know, <laughs> like, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome how they're doing that. So yeah, I, I just, like I say, th- I mean, I wish there were more seasons of this show. But from what you said about this, this season was supposed to be before it was announced, it was the last season, like just them getting to Tantus and trying to find Omega. Uh, I feel like that would have kind of gone off the rails again into that whole. Oh, here's this other bullshit thing there. Oh, here's this other bullshit thing. Like, no, get to fucking Tantus. Will you already? <laughs> You know, like I mean, come on, let, let's 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 stay on point here. And I you're mean, all about the destination, not the journey. Okay. Well, but but here's the thing, like, but but when the when part of the journey has nothing to do with it, I mean, you know, like I mean, I, I I'll go back to the pod racing episode in, in in season two, 
what did that matter? And there were several episodes where you're like, where are we going? Like, I mean, think about it. If if you ask, you know, if you ask, I don't know, 20 fans of Bad Batch, what the hell was the point of season two? Where were they going? How many of them would go, oh, they're, it was this, they're trying to, like, no. Most of them probably would be like, oh, man, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Whereas this season, you know exactly what they're doing. Season one, you know exactly what they're doing. Season two is like, what? What is this? Like, what? Why am I? It, it's it was it was like a sitcom, where every week there's a new zany adventure. You know, oh, they got locked out of their spaceship. Wah, 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 wah. Laugh track. Oh, I guess I shouldn't have dropped them down into the. You know, like that's what it was, which is fine if that's what you're gonna do, but that's not the point. Like this is supposed to be going somewhere. So I think that's why seasons one and three have been better because they're going somewhere. And and this season is obviously going somewhere because we know it's the last season, but it's also, it's emotional as shit. I mean, Kale mentioned it in the comments up above. It's like he, the episode with the, with, you know, where it was just the kids in that one cell, he cried. And I, dude, I admit, Kale, I'm with you. I didn't cry per se, but that was really, that was a tough watch. I mean, that's really like, wow, this is really digging kind of deep, man. I might be a little dead inside, but Robot Chicken saved me on that one. Like every time that kid's coming up all sweet, I'm just thinking Robot Chicken with like, please, Master Skywalker, can my gift just be a hug? <laughs> I put some, I got some fresh cut sunflowers where I put them on the table. Oh, Andy, you're so sweet. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. See, yeah, see, K I mean, look, look, K Kale has two awesome comments. He says, nowhere. They were wasting time to get to season three. That's what he's saying about season two and, and, and about season two as well. He says, more goddamn fetch quests. Yeah, that's really what it was. I mean, it was just kind of like, hey, we're going to go get this thing. Okay, but why? What, what's why? What, what, are you, what are you doing? I don't I don't give a shit. And Horsehead, <laughs> Jeff Caffrey, dude, perfect. His robot chicken fucked the world. <laughs> Damn right, dude. So okay. anyway. I, I've got I've got to correct you. Uh, I used to think that that's what that was too. No, it's for the win. FTW is for the win. No, I'm just that vulgar in my head. <laughs> it's for the win. I, well, I thought the same thing before until someone corrected me on it. So now I get to be the jerk. Look, our mom does LOL wrong in emails yeah. on purpose. So I'm doing FTW wrong on purpose. Okay. You're still not going to pin hook for that championship, but unless you watch all elite wrestling, you don't have to get that reference. Anyway, well played, well played. <laughs> no, I think I think the main point of season two was crosshair story. That was to get him from being with the Empire to realizing he has no place with the Empire because the Empire doesn't give a shit about him. And then that you know inevitably led him to be at Tantus with Omega, so they could <laughs> you know reunite and. That's I think that's why season three is awesome. Is like the, this whole time. I think the biggest strength of this show compared to like the Clone Wars, for example, is like Obi Wan and Anakin were known quantities. You knew where their story began with Episode two. You knew where it was going to go to Episode three, and they they had that, that narrow window to play in. Now we've got these brand new characters. We don't know what's going to happen to them, and we don't know like what their end point is as characters. So as they're making these choices. We don't know how it's going to play out, which is awesome. Like, yeah, when yeah. Crosshair walks, well, you just know, like, with general, the with, with the hope being the overarching theme of Star Wars in general. <laughs> Very good cover right there. Very good cover. <laughs> for. It sounds, it sounded like you were about to spoil something from today's episode. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No, just the idea that, um, you know, like, when, when Crosshair split from the group and chose to stay with the Empire, you're like, they're going to he's going to find his way back. Like, you know, he's not just going to get, get evil and stay evil. You know, yeah. it's, it's like your point about Vader. Like Vader would have sucked if he just like started, started out bad and stayed bad. And that was it. So yeah. like his redemption arc has been cool, but they've been very careful to track that and be like, all right, he's not so sure about how to get along with these people. Cause he knows what he's done and they don't forget either. So everyone that he's, he's shafted in the past, they're like, keeping an eye on him like mm, i don't know about this guy right so i love that and i think that's that's one of the major strengths of the show is we've got all new characters to deal with 
I was afraid, actually. I was afraid when the show came out because I told you I wasn't really a fan of the whole like mutated clones and all that business. Mm-hmm. But um, I do, I do like that. Um, you know, with brand new characters, you can get unpredictable outcomes. I was afraid I would have a hard time latching onto these characters because they're not central to the Skywalker saga. That's and what's interesting is that you're the one that like is a huge fan of the Clone Wars and you had that worry and I'm the one that can't get through the Clone Wars and I was like, "Oh, this is going to be cool." Like it's it's weird how we're like like an, on opposite ends of the spectrum on this one. Like it's <laughs> I, I'm surprised that you weren't like all pumped up for it because it was like an extension of Clone Wars. That's this just seems like it'd be right up your alley. It was just a weird pivot because the whole point of clones was that they were all the same and they were disposable. They were living creatures, but they were basically disposable. They're cannon fodder. That was the point. So, <laughs> you know, they already had seven seasons of a show that was supposed to be, and that's the way they hyped it up originally was like, they're going to tell the boots on the ground story. But then they pivoted because Anakin and Obi-Wan were the most interesting characters. And Dave Filoni fell in love with his own creation in Ahsoka. So it became less about the clones Go and more figure. about Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, and Anakin. So when so we missed that opportunity with the clones. But I, already I was like, they're not supposed to be individuals. So already the 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 conceit of the Clone Wars is a little off of what I got from the movies to begin with. And now when they're coming out and being like, not only are they individual clones, but these clones don't even look like the others. And they have basically superhero powers. I'm like, Oh, mm, that's, that's a hard pill to swallow. That's, that's a riff on a riff on a riff until you end up nowhere near the original premise, you know, but they've, they've made it work to their credit. So yeah, I, you know, I, I agree with that. I mean, I, th- I think, you know, to your point, like, I mean, admittedly, I was a little bit, it wasn't really a turnoff. It was just at the beginning, like, okay, like Hunter's just like, I mean, basically Hunter to me is Captain America. Let's, let's face it, mm-hmm. you know, and then you've got, you know, Wrecker who's, you know, the Hulk, I guess in a way, but you know, good Hulk from the later movies. Um, but you know, they do have kind of superpowers, but it, it kind of, boy, you fucked that up. Um, get that. Oh, AJ. Oh, AJ. There you go. AJ just, lost him his feet on the show okay so yeah i think you know i will i will i'll just keep rolling <laughs> fuck it we're doing it live um yeah i think you know they each had like a superpower like aj was saying but as as the seasons have gone on i think they kind of mellowed out on it i you know i i, I think the best example of that is wrecker because wrecker you know when it started out was he could lift anything destroy anything just kick ass and you know doesn't matter well as the show's gone on like you see him and we're back (laughs) um we see him doing those quote-unquote feats of strength but it's 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 well-timed it's it's still kind of superhuman but it's it's a little more believable Mm -hmm. so it's not quite like it was and hunter's just been hunter because again you know I don't think I'm wrong in kind of comparing him to, you know, being Captain America. He's just like the good guy with the good plan. Who's always going to be the leader guy, Um, you know? And so I I think they've kind of tempered that, but they, you know, they started, you know, like I said, the first half of season one, each guy was used to their maximum potential. And then as it went on, they kind of were like, it was, Oh, this situation could use a little bit of tick. This situation is a little bit of eco, you know, this, you know, crosshair, like, oh, he's not here. Like, you know, um, so I, I think, again, I think it goes back to the writing, which is thankfully, you know, with with, you know, the, the television programming live at be it live action or animated, even the animated stuff I don't like. I know a ton of people do. They are really getting an absolutely beautiful handle on what the fans like to see, but also what makes a good story. And, mm-hmm. and you know so it's like they're writing for the fans but they're not delving into that territory of what they say in the nfl like you know if, if you cater to the fans you're going to be sitting with the fans meaning you're going to lose your job so i think i think they are absolutely doing just a great job of you know 
paying attention to what oh, the fans might kind of like this, but okay, we'll, we'll give them a little bit of that, but we need to tell a good story here because it, at the, at the heart of everything, Star Wars fans want a good goddamn story mm-hmm. because I mean, we love the characters in, in the original trilogy, but why are three movies now the basis of what, you know, in three years is going to be 50 years of entertainment. Think about, think, think about, put that in perspective, name another property that has gone for what will be a half a century and still have active content, you know, and act and Star active. Trek. It not nearly on the level as, as Star Wars, dude, not nearly on the level of Star Wars. It's close. If you if you consider close being like Star Wars is a 90 and Star Trek is a 10. So I'll, I'll give I mean, I'm not wrong. Where, where, where you know, Star, Star Wars celebration, where Star Trek um star trek celebration Th- there isn't one if there is i'm not familiar with it and as as, 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 a, as a giant nerd i would know those things you know when any you know does star trek have basically it's i mean let's face it the genesis of disney plus pretty much was star wars content they knew there was a market oh there. yeah the and mandalorian so the, was the flagship show exactly there's nothing like that with star wars or star trek excuse me so Star Star Wars is that goddamn popular, and the whole basis of it are three movies put out in 70, 1977, 1980, and nineteen eighty three, mm-hmm. and the whole reason we love it. I mean, sure, like you know, I love Luke Skywalker. You know, me, I Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon changed my life. But if it was just like dumb fucking you know space dudes running around kicking ass, okay. But there's okay. I got a, I got a beef. I'm gonna cut you off because you just. You just totally stirred something. Talking season three, Bad Batch. What the hell is it with Star Wars blowing up ships that I love? <laughs> we lost the Razor Crest, and now the Marauder's gone too. What the hell? I'm trying because... to drop an F-bomb to be like two crafts, but seriously, WTF? This is ridiculous. You know, we get attached to these ships, and they're like, no, we're going to blow it up. The Millennium Look. Falcon is the only ship in the galaxy that has plot armor too thick to pierce. That's why they're doing it. Because they can't blow up the Falcon. I have it on good. I'm, I'm very just mad at every other ship that that everybody loves. You know what, dude? I I swore I would never do this on the show. Put me in solo. I swore I would never ever ever divulge this information. But uh, all right. Breaking news here on the Nerf Herder Council. I was sworn to secrecy by Disney, uh, by Lucasfilm. So you guys are going to find something out you've never known before. Uh, The reason that they keep blowing up ships that AJ loves, excuse me, and a lot of other fans love, but they leave the Millennium Falcon alone is because, and again, I have this on good resource, the good resource being literally one of the, uh, two of the top three executives in the entire company at uh, Disney Lucasfilm that they watch the show and they realize that there's no fucking way they're going to blow up the Millennium Falcon. So blow anything else up you want. Leave the fucking Falcon alone. I said, leave the Falcon alone. So guess what they're doing? They're leaving the fucking Falcon alone. I made that happen. And I know that because Bob Iger himself sent me an apology email. And I can put it up on the screen if you want, but I don't know how to do that. That's the only reason I'm not doing it. But I made it happen. The Millennium Falcon will survive in perpetuity while everything else around it is destroyed because I made it happen. It's because of me and the Nerf Herder Council. The Falcon will survive in perpetuity because they're not going to make any more content that contains it. Listen, shithead. Don't that ship you might take- as well be dead. All right. If AJ is going to do that, then I will just take him out and, and go on a dumb screen myself. Well, AJ can come back when he stops being a disrespectful dickhead. Um, It's actually all true. I have all the emails and uh, uh, receipts to back it. I, I was not just ranting to be funny on the show. Bob Iger himself did say he saw our show and said that I'm right. Like he realized that he was a dumb bastard. JJ uh, Abrams is a fucking prick for killing Han Solo. Um, he stopped just one, one, one tick short of asking me to be a new writer for star Wars. 
I saw where he was going. I told him, yeah, you know what, dude, I think they can do better than, than I can. Um, so I'm, I'm going to step down. I mean, I know I could do a kick-ass job, but you know, I mean, if I'm in there, then I'm just going to have to kick JJ Abrams in the balls repeatedly for about, you know, 17 straight days for Purgle and the world between worlds and rebels and or, actually rebels isn't him, but I could blame him technically. Could I? Now nah, I'm still going to blame him because he killed Han Solo. So, um, all right. Well, uh, AJ looks like he's had enough. So, all right. What have we learned? Uh, that the Falcon is an old, old ship. All right. AJ is going back in time out. I, I don't, I don't understand like why, like he doesn't understand. Like, like if you're that wrong, shut up. We're wrong on this show all the time, but not like that. All right. You're back. Are you done now? Am stop. I back? I don't know. Well, look, look, stop ripping on the goddamn Millennium Falcon. I don't have Han Solo anymore. So you leave the fucking Falcon alone. I feel like the damn kid at Tantus getting put in time out for trying to escape. It's well, ridiculous. Listen, listen. OK, look. They're, they're, OK. I don't have Han Solo anymore. So leave the Falcon alone. It would be like on my music show. You mean like Disney's have... leaving the Falcon alone and not using it in shows? Dude, seriously, I'm going to quit the show. <laughs> it would be like, God damn it, you popped my balloon. <laughs> but seriously, seriously, the Falcon is like indestructible. You can never blow up the Falcon. But apparently that's the only ship that has that going for it. You know, we got all hooked on the Razor Crest. That's why it's still up there on my shelf back there. And I love the Marauder, too. I'm already scouring AliExpress for some sort of, like, fan design knockoff of that ship so I can get, like, mini-figure scale Marauder. I want that so bad. And, well, I already have that. I've got a whole pile of bricks there. There's just nothing but rubble behind me. So I might as well just call that the Marauder at this point because they blew the damn thing up. It's bullshit, man. Dude, I can I... deal with Tick falling to his death. I cannot deal with the Marauder dying, all right? They, they do seem to have a habit of that, unfortunately. I mean, to close out the Falcon thing, I think the Falcon is just... I, I'll be honest. I think had they not killed off Han Solo, I think they might have blown up the Falcon because they could have gone, oh, well, at least you still got, you know, still got Han Solo. Man, I didn't <laughs> want to get sidetracked on this, but I just got to follow the, the, the conversation thread. That's all right. Um, why do you think that they were able to kill Han Solo and not the Falcon? Like they killed off one of their most popular characters before they blew up a ship. I, I, I don't, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, what I will say is that I think, you know, I mean, I mean, Kale said it. Like Harrison Ford wanted, you know, the character to go. Um, you know, it, it it harkens back to the whole Lawrence Kasdan writing, you know, during Return of the Jedi, like, you know, someone's got to go like to add the emotional gravitas to it. But I think. I think they underestimated and by they, I mean, J.J. Abrams again, I like, dude, I'm sorry, like J.J. Abrams really fucked up with episode seven and nine. He really did. As a Star Wars fan, like he he really fucked up. He, he just did. And I think saying someone's got to go. And when you kill off Han Solo, I think he's thinking, well, you know. <laughs> Chastity Crawley. I think if they blow up the Falcon, fans would find the execs in their houses might go the same way as the Falcon. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, Yeah, I, I, I just think, you know, the the thought process is not wrong like if you kill a major character it does add some you know weight to it you know that you know we're, we're just talking about tech mm -hmm. you know skip uh skip ruckley and kale and you know a couple other people like no man you got to keep them dead like otherwise it doesn't mean anything you know but killing a major character it does have that thing you know we're you know i think it was kale was asking about who's the assassin i don't know about you but every time i see the assassin on the screen i'm going I'm I'm waiting for that to eventually come out to be 
tech, like a reprogrammed tech or something. So, but anyway. Ooh, the same way, the same way that Echo, sorry, Echo, um, was being used by um, the separatists. Yeah. And they had to rescue him. Yeah. So I think, I think when they killed Han, you know, I understand the logic of that because technically that works. But I think what they completely underestimated is technically, uh, technically well played, very well played. <laughs> um, I, I think what they completely underestimated is the fact that you hadn't seen Han Solo on screen since 1983. So you're talking about, oh, God, what is it? 20, 34 years or whatever the hell it was, like something like that, like or thir- I'm, I'm sorry, thir- 32 years, whatever the whatever the fuck it was. Um. When you kill a character like that, like the whole world's been waiting to see that character. And you're like, oh, guess what? We're we're going to use him as emotional clickbait. Everyone's like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Like, are you kidding me? Like you you give me Han Solo back. And the, I mean, let's be honest. As much as I joke about it on this show, about being pissed off that that happened. Being honest, you know, and I'm sure the show knows. I'm fucking serious. That's bullshit. What the fuck? It's like in part of my terminology here, but you know, there's going to be dirty words on the show. Does not necessarily reflect the views of the virtual canteen. That's a fucking dick tease. You give me Han Solo for two thirds of a movie. Go, nah, see if like, well, what's the point of that? Like wh- why? And so after that, I think at that point they kind of went, I think there was so much as much as a lot of the fan base was like, okay, I get it. I'm cool with it. Awesome. I think there were so many people that were like, fuck that. That they went, oop, I guess we better not fuck with the Falcon. I mean, look at look how look at dude, episode nine, perfect example. You just brought it all the way back. You just brought it all the way back. Well, wait a minute, let me finish. You were right. You were right. Basically, fans like you were so pissed off. They're like, Well, we can't kill characters anymore. What can we do? Oh, we could blow up ships. That's what we can do. Go JT. But I was also right because JJ Abrams, he fucked up killing Han. And episode seven learned his lesson. Look what happened with Chewie in episode nine. We were all like, oh, my God, they blew up Chewbacca. Two minutes mm-hmm. and 37 seconds later. Nope, Chewie's fine. Like, yeah, they didn't is, even let that one marinate long enough to get anyone hooked yeah. on that idea. Is is that not a knee jerk reaction? Is that not a knee jerk reaction to, oh, shit, I, I better not piss people off thinking I killed one of their favorite characters. He did it wrong in both respects. Number one, don't kill Han. Number two. Make the chewy thing play out to where you're like, holy shit. But no. Uh, okay, Kale. Kale says, having watched Force Awakens again on Saturday, Han's death works. No, it doesn't. There's no fucking point to it. He's a fucking scoundrel. If you wanna if you want to write Han out, write him out of the story and being like have him have him actually do what he didn't do in the original trilogy. In the real original trilogy, he's like, hey man. I'm just going to go be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a good guy now. I'm going to go, I'm going to go be a good guy. You know, I, you know, I was a scoundrel. Now I'm a good guy. How about now have him go, you know what? Fuck this. I helped you. I'm out. I'm a scoundrel. And then you're like, what the shit? He went back to, and then you have that specter of, you know, of Han hanging over you for episode eight and nine. Like, is he coming back? Like we have with tick in bad batch. It's you've got that specter there. Like, do a reverse like don't just so i can comp- anyway <laughs> the one thing we haven't circled back on is uh you said you have an explanation for asajj ventures coming back yes so apparently this is canon let me see if i can remember this properly apparently like when she died and i don't know the the quinlan Voss book or whatever it was something with uh Tyrannus, dark, right uh, like, dark disciple could, yeah and apparently, like, the Night Sisters revived her is the long and short of it. So that is not anyway, anywhere in the book. It's it, that's what I'm wondering. You know, I have read it. Uh, well, I have not. So, um, but yeah, I, I don't know where this was from. I'll have to ask. I'll have to ask my work buddy. But he sent he sent me this big. It was a screen cap. It wasn't like something like. But he copied and pasted from the internet. It was like a screenshot, and basically like, you know, he took her body back to the night. Something put put her body in stasis, and then 
you know, a couple months later or something, it had something to do with Obi Wan helped out or something. But like he went to say his last goodbye through the force and felt something and whatever. But it, it, the long and short of it is the Night Sisters brought her back. Maybe we've only got four episodes left of this show, and they said that they had taken that book into consideration. Do you think we're actually going to get an explanation in this series, or is this another one for? I don't know, Tales of the Bounty Hunters or Tales of the Sith or whatever they come up with after Tales of the Empire. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't, especially with four episodes remaining, I don't think there's any room for the Ventress story. I think you need to get to the end of, of what's happening here. Um, otherwise, it, it, there's there's just no room. Does that piss for... you off? Like it's, that's a that's a big dead. Well, but wait a minute, though. And to I, then I, go I... Into, into press and be asked about it and be like, yeah, we're aware of that. We thought of that. Okay. And then you don't tell us? Like what? But I don't see I can't I can't honestly comment on that because I not knowing where that came from. I mean, it very well could be he might have pulled it off Wikipedia or starwars.com or something like I I don't know. So maybe it's out there and we're just like way behind the fucking eight ball. <laughs> like we're the last ones to um well, no, the Bad Batch writers have said they're aware of Dark Disciple and they're honoring the events of that book. So she very definitely did die, but now she's alive and they haven't explained how that happened. You can't bring a character back from the dead and then end your show and be like, maybe we'll tell you later. But you can. I mean, that that keeps or <laughs> said jeff <laughs> tales of the loose ends <laughs> i mean yes yeah, it straight up breaks canon until it's explained that's the problem yeah but it's, I, it's like but... it was it's like we talked about grogu being reunited with din Djarin in book of boba fett like season three of the mandalorian starts and they're just hanging out again you're like what the fuck happened they were apart at the end of season two. Now they're together at the beginning of season three. You're just assuming that people have seen this other thing, this entire other show. Yeah. Like, like to, to resurrect a character and then just be like, don't worry about it. We, we thought of that. Okay. Well, what's the answer? Stupid. <laughs> right. I, I don't know because especially with a character like Ventress, I think as soon as you reintroduce her, and there's actually a canonical reason why she's back. I that is such a popular character, but that I think that kind of, you know, again, we we do th this whole thing keeps coming back to the quality of the writing. Um, all right, yeah, okay. So you would know this better than I would. So Skip Ruckle asks, timeline wise, when did she die? Okay, it so was, a quick it primer was, on Dark Disciple. But real quick, before you say that, a very simple answer: it was before bad batch so technically she was supposed to be dead so that's yes. why we're bringing this up so aj yes. uh continue yeah so dark disciple was a book that was created they had a couple other seasons of the clone wars written when the show got canceled so they did a bunch of stuff to adapt to those stories we got um we got comic books that explained darth maul what happened to him after the emperor whooped his ass in a, in a lightsaber duel um they've straight up just contradicted other story reels and stuff that say they didn't happen, but they've kind of honored them off screen. Like Boba Fett was allegedly trained by Cad Bane. They showed footage of those story reels and those unfinished story arcs. Um, some of them did end up getting made like for season seven of the clone wars when they resurrected the series on Disney plus. Um, and then dark disciple was an eight episode uh, story arc planned for season I guess it would have been season seven at the time of the Clone Wars before season seven was created, but it was an eight episode story arc that was supposed to take place um, in two seasons beyond what aired last on Cartoon Network. And it was all about um, the Jedi Council basically putting a hit out on Count Dooku, saying like, we can't, we, we don't outright murder people, but we really need this guy gone. So we're going to, we're going to contract this out. And they went to Quinlan Voss for it because he <laughs> he never really got along with the council anyway. And he contracted Asajj Ventress because Asajj Ventress, you know, had been ousted and had had beef with Dooku. So uh, Quinlan Voss and Asajj Ventress end up hooking up, like actually hooking up. Um, 
there are mature themes in that book. And she they ends became, up dying. They became, they became one with the force in a biblical sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they were very much in the living force, not the cosmic <laughs> force. She felt the force within her. Let's put it that way. Too many lightsabers. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, yeah, she ended up dying by taking a lethal dose of force lightning from Dooku that was meant for Quinlan. Yeah. And and then months later, she ends up being interred in some pond or lake or something on Dathomir. Um, and that's that's where her story ended. She died in that book. And now she's back in Bad Batch. And they're like, yeah, we're aware she died. We thought of that. And they're like. We're not going to tell you how it happened. And apparently four episodes to go, we're probably not going to find out in the show. So a dead character just came back to life and we just get to wonder what the fuck. I, I do have to say when you're like, yeah, she was interred in a pond. I literally just picture people walking up with their body. And being like, pond? No, just, just like her body, like, like just chucking it in the pond, like, whoosh, whoosh, like splash, like, <laughs> so yeah, like, but yeah, I, it's like, I mean, I, it, this is something they're not just going to let hang i mean you have to say that about what they've done like as much as we're waxing poetic about the writing and how good it is um we're not just fanboying I me mean, it, it is that good and they have addressed pretty much everything you'd want them to address at some point and again we do have to remember that they are three years ahead of you know, ahead of schedule. So things that we're, we're talking about right now, bitching about in three years in 2027, we may have every single answer plus two movies and seven TV shows about it. Like, so I think, and again, I, I mentioned it earlier, the popularity of the character, I think is something that they wouldn't mess with, that they weren't going to say, Hey, we're going to explain this. Cool. Your jets. Okay true now um the, the hour is getting late so let's let's look towards the future a little bit since that's a good segue there hold yeah, on real quick four I'm episodes actually, left okay hold your thought i'm actually banning someone from the chat for the first time ever and it is kale mcleish uh kale uh that this is the comment on screen right now for all of our audio viewers that really pissed me off so i'm just gonna bring up this first one he says Felona should make this and then add a ninth episode that does a quick a quick wrap up of how she met up with the Bad Batch. Be worth more than Solo. Kale, you're literally the first person I'm banning from the chat. You don't, if, if you didn't learn anything from about 15 minutes ago, don't fuck with Han Solo. Don't fuck with the Millennium Falcon. And by proxy, that would obviously mean don't fuck with the movie Solo, especially on our show. And you and I have talked offline, Kale, about how much I love the, the, the film, Solo. It's amazing. So why would you do that? So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to officially announce that it's it's forever been a, a show joke since we went to a video format, which was, what, four years ago, something like that? Oh, get banned from the chat. No one's ever actually been banned from the chat until tonight. Cam McLeish is officially banned from the chat. AJ, you can jump back in. Can't believe it's Kale of all people to be the first one. <laughs> but uh Kale, we hardly knew ye. <laughs> all right, so back to your regularly scheduled program. You see, I said it right this time. So four episodes to go. Four episodes to go. Um, what do you think is happening? How does this show wrap up? I uh, dude, I tell you what, I've been wondering that. Um first of all, I think tech's coming back or, i'm sorry tick is coming back i think somehow they're all five going to be there's going to be some big come to jesus moment with you know they're all there i hate to say this but i would not be surprised i'm not predicting this because i hope it doesn't happen because i think that the, you know the bad batch could be some amazing characters in some storylines down the road if you've got rex alive way down the road why can't you have the bad batch alive but i would not be shocked to see this be a rogue one situation where they accomplish their mission but they all die in in the process wow really you think they're gonna do that on an animated series huh 
you you said it tonight that it, it this is not Star Wars for kids necessarily. It's just Star Wars. And they've introduced themes of death, especially. Oh, now this is a good one. Oh, Skip, this is a good one. Skip Ruckel says Omega. I'm sorry. I, I, I keep mispronouncing it. Omega sacrifices herself to save the batch. And this is how Palpatine lives. That's not a bad theory. I'm going on record and saying that Betcha rips uh, Hemlock's nuts off. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, see. Now, wait a minute. You know, fuck everybody else. Fuck the Bad Batch. Screw. I can't, I'm sorry. I have too many F-bombs tonight. Screw the Bad Batch. Screw all the human characters. If Batcher dies, we riot. Yeah. This this is where, like you said, like they're not pandering to the fans. Come on. They, they've got another child character as a central focus, and she's got a dog. Yeah. Come on now. Yep. That is such low hanging fruit. Yep. But it's awesome. And uh, dude, and the, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely honest. They, they cannot kill. Ba if they kill Batcher, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cry. I will. It will be the first time in my life that I will cry at a cartoon. I will cry if they kill Batcher. And it's some dumb alien looking thing that was like a murderous piece of trash for the first part of the season, and all of a sudden at the end, I'm crying. Because it reminds me of a dog. <laughs> yeah. And dude, Kale, you're right. That's exactly what I was th what I was thinking. Um, I, I I by the way, I did ban Kale from the chat, but I brought him back. I felt bad. Kale's a good friend. His band Lines of Conviction has an awesome, awesome record out. Go look up the band Lines of Conviction. His record is out on music platforms everywhere. Don't st stream it if you want, but pay for it. Please pay for it. It's oh my god. Um, so anyway, Kale, you're lucky. Anyway, Kale says, well, it's all leading to rise of Skywalker. Skip has a good idea there. Kale. I, yeah, that's, yeah, I, I, that's, I, that's kind of, I mean, I think it all ties in. I think we know that, but yeah, AJ, I really, I really do. I really do think that, yeah, they, they're, they're going to croak. Other, otherwise, I mean, I'd be ha I'd be happy with them sticking around because I'd love to see, especially live action. I mean, come on. I mean, first of all, I'm going to say it right now, and I don't think anyone can deny it. Who would be a better live action record than The Rock? Okay. Um, oh crap! I hadn't thought of that, dude. You could have these live action characters. Dude, I was watching was, all WrestleMania weekend, and I never thought of that. Holy shit! Dude, wouldn't you though? I mean, this picture—you picture the Rock in your head, and you're like, "Holy shit!" Put some armor on him. That's that's fucking wrecker. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I really think I could see that happening. Where this is this is the end, and and you know, this season is so emotional, and you've already lost tack or tick, excuse me. Um, there there's a moment, in, no spoilers, but there's a moment in today's episode. Where I was like, "Holy shit, are they gonna do that again?" So they, you know, they they kind of tease things like that. I real, I, yeah, I, I, I think, I think that I think they're all goners. I hope they're not. Wow, that is dark, man. But you know what, dude? Like, it it it, it makes sense from a writing standpoint, in a way. Um. So, like I say, I'm not. I'm not predicting it. I'm just saying I would love them to stick around, but I could easily see them terminating all the characters. Okay, so, so let's unpack that for a second. The reason Rogue One works is because the heroes die, but they 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 lose the battle, so to speak, but they win the war. Like the heroes die, but they accomplish the mission that allows the rebellion to succeed. So there's still that like ray of hope, like they get their mission accomplished and then everybody else lives to fight on and eventually win. Yeah. They've got Omega's blood already. So how, how do you, how do you off every character that we've been following for three seasons and yet have it still feel like the good guys came out on top? That's a good point. Um, Where's the moral victory? We don't know what happens to Tantus. They might blow the whole place sky high. 
Yeah. See, <laughs> see, this is why I wish we would have landed on an even number because I really wanted to do spoilers because I, I have an explanation, but I don't want to like it. Um, I, 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 think, I think there's a way. Well, we know the project isn't a complete success anyway because it takes until episode nine, which is long in the future of the timeline for Palpatine to come back. So, you know, by the time he dies, they haven't figured it out, apparently. Yeah. Man, I. it's such a good question. Like, how do you have them? If they die, how do they come out on top? I mean, you know, Kale, like, uh, Kale says, it's annoying how they had to go back and feed so much into it from Bad Batch and Mando to make Necromancer really work. But now the Rise of Skywalker is going to be kind of cool for a completionist going going in order. And, and Kale, like, I, you know, I, I, I've said many times on the show that I think that what they're doing is they're writing stuff to correct fan complaints from the the sequel trilogy and I, I can't i can't say fan complaints because that makes it sound like oh they're just listening to the fans like it's not that they don't give a shit but i i think they see like with with how excellent the story writing has been on so many things beyond those three movies you know particularly rise of skywalker um i think that favreau and filoni are really trying to put things together to go you know People already love us, but we're going to be fucking legends if we put something together, especially over this long course of, you know, let's say years that actually makes this stuff make sense to where people go back and watch the rise of Skywalker and be like, this movie kicks ass. Well, it's like how the Clone Wars embellished and improved episode two and three. Yeah, that's that's that is a great that is a great example. That is a great example. Yes. Um. Yeah, AJ. I mean, back to the original question. I, I, I don't, I don't know how they're, you know, if if the Bad Batch has to go, how it actually turns out to be like a good thing, you know, for lack of a better, you know, I, see, I, I don't know. But see, I just, I'm, and I'm just the opposite because I think they have to live. That's just the the storytelling format. Having your heroes all die is a really difficult thing to pull off and not leave the audience feeling like shit. But if the heroes all live, that introduces so many other potential problems that you need to solve in future stories to tell. Because these are legendary heroes at this point that would be fighting the good fight. And it's, like I said, it's the Ahsoka problem. Where the hell are they? Yeah. Why didn't they show up in Rebels at least? You know, like, it, and the, the real answer is they didn't exist as characters yet when that show was written. But now yeah. you gotta you got to figure that crap out. So I don't see how they all live. They, it feels like they have to live, but if they do, then you have to address their absence in other stories further down the timeline. But if you kill them all off, how do you make that feel like a satisfying resolution for the audience? Uh, I'm kind of on the edge of my seat to see how they wrap this all up. I'm 100% on the edge of my seat to see how they wrap it up. Um, I, I think... And I know I'm going to be way in the minority on this. But I am a fan, and maybe this makes me a sick bastard, <laughs> but I am a big fan of swerve endings that are ungodly dark. Um, you know, like I mean, and I'll I'll use this example, and this is a spoiler for any of you really guys who should have... be watching X-Men 97. Wow. Well, but isn't that animated? Well, yeah, it's a continuation of the X Men animated series from the nineties. Yeah, in nineteen ninety six, so they call this ninety seven because it's the next season of that show. Mar Marvel and I are on the outs right now. Um, well, like I said, today I had to wait to watch Bad Batch because X Men hit me so hard. I needed time. <laughs> <laughs> like, <they're> <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's only five. It's only five episodes into the season, by the way. I'm laughing at you and Chastity. Chastity Crawley. They get there we stuck go. In, they get there we stuck. Go. She in, nailed it. They get stuck in carbonite. Boom. Explain. <laughs> Chastity, damn it, where were you an hour and ten minutes ago? We could have ended if, this episode inside of ten minutes. <laughs> if the Lucasfilm story group hasn't hit you up already, Chastity, then they're missing out. Right. <laughs> Chastity Crawley. Dream Theater Superfan, Star Wars Superfan, and writer. Um, 
yeah like i'm a fan of the of the swerve ending but i'm also again this makes me a sick bastard a, a fan of the dark ending like in I'll give you an example and then I'll, you know, we'll get out. But one of my favorite Stephen King uh, novels, it's actually a novella, is The Mist. And they made a movie of it. If you haven't seen it, it's absolutely kick ass. And the movie is about 95 percent accurate, 90 to 95 percent accurate to the book. So it's not one of those where you're like, oh, you got to read the book to really get it. Like, no, the movie pretty much nails it. Well, the difference is. Uh, in the mist, the ending is they escape and, you know, it's kind of like a open ended. Okay. Well, how are they going to, they're just going to keep going and surviving, you know, without giving away the story. So you're like, okay, it's kind of open ended. Well, in the movie, they escape. The, the whole thing is set in a grocery store. It's basically like, it, it's kind of like a commentary on society. And basically the mist covers this town. A bunch of these people get stuck in this grocery store because they don't want to go out because in the mist is a bunch of horrific, giant, weird fucking alien creatures from another dimension. It, it's really it, it's not Sounds as like dumb. a normal trip to Aldi for, to me, but yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and that's why all the people die because they they ran outside to fucking give their quarters back for their carts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, uh, but I mean, it, it, guys, it, if you have not read the book or seen the movie, it's not nearly as dumb as it sounds. It's actually brilliant. It's a phenomenal read or a phenomenal watch. Um, well, anyway, so they're stuck in the grocery store. So in the movie, it's the main character, his like 10 year old son and an elderly woman and another character. And they manage to somehow get out of the mist. They get into their car in the parking lot, which is only like, a, you know, 100 foot you know run away but there's so much shit out there like who knows what's out there so they get in the car and they start driving and they run out of gas after going so far and what ends up happening is like they're expecting they don't know when this is going to end they don't know you know what's going to happen to them they just know that everything out there can kill them so the main character has a gun and he's got three bullets left but there's four of them in a the car so the end and this is a big spoiler so feel free here but spoiler for the movie so feel free to read the book but whatever in the book again it's an uplifting thing the guy gets out with it with his kid and they end up in a, in a howard johnson and they're sleeping and they're like oh what's going to happen now and they they kind of hear a very scratchy radio broadcast like hey come this way to get out of the mist whatever it's like oh my god there's hope well in the movie it shows their little jeep cherokee in the mist at a distance and you hear three pops and the main character just screaming, meaning he killed the elderly woman, killed the other character and killed his own son. Then he jumps out of the truck and he starts screaming so that the, it'll get the monster's attention. So they kill him and he starts hearing this big rumbling and this crazy fucking rumbling. And what, what the rumbling is, is a military track vehicle driving through the mist with survivors and behind the military track vehicle the mist had started to separate and it was going away so basically the guy killed his own son for no oh. fucking reason so that is one of those movies where people are like i hate it it fucking sucks um, so you want the stephen king ending to bad batch yes i do i do yes it, 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 like i can't say i want it but i would enjoy You're it sick. because I You're like those dark sick. endings. Every ending is happy. There's either a neutral ending or a happy ending. There's never the holy shit. So like, you know. Yeah, you want an unhappy ending? That's called real life. Well, fine. Then make it mirror it so that you watch this whole thing and go, what the fuck? It's a, it's, it, 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 it. it. It creates it, it, an emotional reaction. Monty Python again. Um, real quick, AJ. Uh, look at this. Man. The Legionnaire podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. So it's finally caught you guys live. We're about to record our episode on Bad Batch 2. Loving the season. Bad Batch is in the running for best show in Disney era, in my humble opinion. Man. You guys got in so late, but I actually said earlier in the show, it's one of my first takes, that I think that this is not only one of the best, you know, animated shows that Disney has done in terms of writing. I think it's up there 
with just good Star Wars. So, um, by the way, guys, Legionnaire Podcast, put up all your contact information and where we can find you guys in the chat. We'll bring that up on the screen so we can pimp you guys out, man. Thank you very mm-hmm. much for tuning in. That's awesome. So, <laughs> all this positivity after me saying, yeah, I want the Bad Batch to just fucking die at the end. <laughs> Everybody dead. Yes. It's fine. The Empire wins. Yeah. But the reason I was, you know, <laughs> short story long, I was I was bringing that up, AJ, because Star Wars has never done that. Even with Rogue One, which is the closest closest example, <laughs> closest example we have. There, as you phrased it, there was still something good that came out of it. You know, all of our main characters died. We loved them. We got attached to them over the course of a two and a half hour movie. But something good came out of it. In this one, what if nothing does? What if it's just literally maybe you gotta have something? You gotta have what, something. The sacrifice has to mean something. Look, we already know that the project gets set back that it takes another 50 years to figure it out. Yeah. So whatever they're working on won't be completed. Well, then now, maybe what it is is maybe maybe then what what happens is they do something that that's the reason why it takes 50 more years. Like it was supposed to happen in like two years, but the Bad Batch blows some shit up that it's like, OK, now it's going to take, you know. It's going to take 50 years. I don't know, but I wouldn't be against it. I would not be against it if it was just, you know, man, like this kind of was all for naught and it was really just eventually a, a story to kind of you know further along the cloning of the emperor storyline it would continue the trend because dave filoni had so much fun in both clone wars and rebels of dangling the carrot of like how close the good guys got to unraveling palpatine's plans so many times like like season seven of the clone wars man fives had it all put together and he was running off to tell people, and Palpatine had to act fast to make sure he got off before he could do anything about it, because his whole plan yeah. was almost laid bare before the cl- before Order Six Order Sixty Six even happened. You know, and then there's you know a number of times in season seven also where you know Darth Maul told Ahsoka what was going on, and that had to go sideways for things to happen. Yeah, and you know so on and so on and so on. Like so many times the emperor was exposed, but he was able to snuff it out before anybody else found out. And I feel like that might be the case here, but almost in reverse. Like, you know, the emperor's almost got what he wants in his hands, you know, Umiga with her, with her M count. And, and yet it still takes Grogu in the Mandalorian. And then some time after that, before he can actually resurrect himself. Yeah. I mean, maybe maybe this whole thing turns out to be the origin of, you know, the Grogu thing. Maybe this is the start of it. And mm-hmm. may, may, and I mean, maybe that's our predict or not our prediction. I would say mine. Maybe maybe that's where this whole thing ends up, where, you know, the Bad Batch blows up the, the you know, the whole thing with the kids and everything like that. And Grogu, the reason he's so fucking important in Mando is because he's the resurrection of that project. Okay, I'm going full on tinfoil hat for my theory to wrap this up. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just, neurons are firing, man. It's getting crazy up here. Okay, how about this? Dr. Pershing from Mandalorian, right? What if he is the offspring of that adult female clone scientist? So he continues the work that his mom started, and that's how it all ties together. Because he said in his whole like thing to the uh, New Republic senator, or whatever that like his mom wasn't allowed to follow her life's work. So maybe this was her life's work was working at Tantus. They look similar enough, and if you want to say, like, eh, you know, clones and copies of clones and children of clones, that's why he doesn't look quite like, you know, Django Fett, but close enough. He's a dude with roughly the same color skin and same color hair. <laughs> right. All right. I, I got to say, I'm with Kale. Kale says, dude, I like that. Dude, I'm I'm with Kale. I agree with that. I, I think that's a 
That's a damn good prediction, man. That 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 actually works. And and you also explained it about it, twenty minutes shorter than I would have. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there you we're go. already running almost to ninety minutes here. So yeah. I figured All you right. know, we need to shut up eventually. All right. So before we close, I'm going to bring up my master's question. So. First of all, thank all of you guys for tuning in. We appreciate you guys checking out another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. This has nothing to do with Star Wars. Uh, it is a Just it is watching a, the viewer count drop. Yeah, it's it's a sports <laughs> betting question, but it's not it's not who do I bet on like this that and the other. It's so I'm a huge fan of the Masters. So you know, as I said earlier in the show, I'm struggling a little bit. Like my thing growing up with my dad was golf. My dad taught me to play golf when I was seven. I'm 48. So it's been 41 years I've been playing golf and literally I've watched the final round of the Masters with my dad pretty much every one of those years, except for the last couple when he really couldn't see very well. But we did talk on the phone about the Masters. So this tournament this year especially is just very emotional for me. Um, it's also the one time a year I take literally four days off of everything. Like I literally shut the door in my man cave for about, you know, literally 96 hours and absolutely just I, I relax. I drink beer. I, you know, freaking eat snacks that I don't normally eat. I'm not a snack guy. And I watch golf literally 12 hours a day for four straight days. So I'm not sports betting guy. But last year when they were doing all that sports betting thing, I bet five bucks on each golfer. I picked five guys. And the guy one of the guys i picked won and i won 95 dollars. so i was like yeah i'll bet again this year so i bet you know i, I found one of those sites we get 150 bucks in free bets if you bet five so i have 150 dollars in free bets so i have two different philosophies here doesn't matter the golfer i'm wondering if i should bet for them to win or if i should bet for them to place in top five you win more money if they win but it's more likely if they get the top five and if I bet in the top five, then multiple, I can have multiple winners. But if I bet each of them to win, I can only have one guy win. So what do you think is smarter? <laughs> Kale. I, think, I think this is what's smartest for me. <laughs> Look at AJ dumps himself out. Kale. Yay. Master has presented Dolby with clothes. By the way, uh, uh, Kale, uh, AJ and I are, we're trying to think of, of show topics today, and AJ completely forgets that I am so hooked on Harry Potter. It's crazy. So we definitely need some Harry Potter stuff. Um, so, AJ, what do you think? Oh, go big or go home. I mean, I, I just came back from Vegas. So, okay, <laughs> right. All right, Kale I says five dollars. <laughs> I lost 50 to do it, but I won five. <laughs> well, I, I'll give you some examples because I, I wrote down some numbers because I'm going to I'm going to place my bets later tonight. But for example, if, if for if, if I bet, let's say 20 bucks on John Rahm to win, who is that last year's champion? If I bet 20 bucks in right now, it's three hundred and twenty dollars. If I bet ten dollars on him for a top five, it's forty seven fifty. So. OK. But if I were to take that $20 and bet it on three other guys, I could win a potential $365 if they all place in the top five, but they're all long shots. So, you know, and I, I literally have my list of golfers who I want to bet on, and I've got it reversed. I've got one list where it's bet on them to win or bet on them to win in the top five. Or not win in top, excuse me, bet on them to win or bet on them to be in the top five. And I can again, I want to go hard to go home. And I am doing that with Scotty Scheffler, who's the world number one, and he's key kicks ass, and he's probably going to win the Masters. But that notwithstanding, I'm wondering, do I go hard to go home? Or do I kind of hedge my bets to kind of like win multiple times but make less money if one of the favorites wins? See, I'm the, I'm the guy at roulette that will bet like red or black and then also throw something on a number just to see if you know it hits well that's why i'm so, doing the top five thing as opposed to it's something okay. like pick your pick your top five golfers and bet them all to place in the top five okay some some might hit some might not who knows the longer odds the better 
I, I will I will tell you this. So there's a couple former champions, and we'll get out of here because no one gives a fuck about this, but these are some interesting numbers. So two former champions, Adam Scott, the only Australian champion ever. I'm sure Kale knows that. If I put $10 on Adam Scott, right, 10 bucks for Adam Scott to win, you know what my payout would be? Uh, No. <laughs> Sorry. One... One thousand two hundred and ten dollars. Is that Australian dollars though? Because that doesn't really count. <laughs> That's not real money. <laughs> you win. <laughs> well, thanks for showing up to another episode of the Nerd Bird Council. Um, but here's another awesome one. If I bet ten dollars, yeah, Kale's from Australia, and at our three hundred, at our three dollar US dollar tier of Patreon, that's like half a year's salary. So. <laughs> Dude, don't be busting on poor Kale. He already got banned from the chat for a minute. Um, I'm I'm just busting on currency conversion rates. K Kale's right. He says he says he says wouldn't you wouldn't you rather have the small win rather than I picked the wrong guy and lost twenty bucks? Well, Kale, I've got one hundred fifty. Is this is the small loss though? Isn't it? Yeah. Well, and I and I I bet five so that I got one hundred fifty dollars in free money. So basically, I'm out five dollars. And, and that's a whole nother story, which is hilarious from last night. But anyway, um, so here's one. Everyone knows this name. Phil Mickelson, three time Masters oh, champion. Lefty. Yeah. Finished second last year, just last year. And he is he is 52 years old. So if I bet ten dollars on him to win it all, how much do you think I would win? And now I just told you Adam Scott for ten dollars was one thousand two hundred and ten dollars for Phil Mickelson to get the win, betting the same ten dollars. What do you think it would be? It's got to be five hundred or less, right? I mean, he's way more solid to win this thing. Three thousand ten dollars. If I put ten bucks down Shit's on on lefty, fire on him, man. I, I believe me, that's that's in there. So, but, but here now here's another cool thing. So for Adam Scott to finish in the top five, if I put five dollars down, I would win one hundred and twenty five dollars. And Phil Mickelson, if I put five bucks down on him to finish in the top five, which he's done a number of times, two hundred and sixty seven dollars and fifty cents. And that leaves me one hundred and forty five extra dollars of free money to bet. <laughs> so guess what I'm doing, at least on those two. <laughs> or All 140, right. I should say so. Let so it I, ride, baby. Yep. So I so I. My my thinking is I, I think just bet on a bunch of dudes to win in the top to go in the top five and just do that and then put a few a few bucks on someone to win all those guys to win outright. Because at least if I can make up my five bucks, hey, what the fuck, right? Yeah, works for me. Yeah. So um just interesting right. math the way it works out. So I'm gonna do a quick plug for our Patreon. Yes, patreon.com forward slash nhc podcast we have two tiers both of which will get you early audio access to these episodes you get this on friday instead of sunday and special bonus for this week only i will cut out all of that golf betting talk at the end of the episode <laughs> for paying patreon members only otherwise you got to sit through all that shit all right where else can we be found jt so <laughs> Look, man, I said at the beginning I was only going to take a few minutes at the end, and I didn't do it at the beginning. I didn't do it in the middle, so give me some credit. So we can be found in any number of places, but as always, guys, we are going to be right back here two weeks from now. The date will be Wednesday, April 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it is going to be our May 4th episode, and it's going to be random Star Wars bullshit. We have episode one coming back out in theaters we've got a one day star wars marathon we've got star wars lego sets which aj is the master of lego if you don't know that aj is the master of star wars lego please go to our channel and look up all the wtf fridays look at his background right now that beautiful background which is his office and uh, aj builds lego live here on the show on wtf friday so there's another plug for wtf fridays but uh, we're going to be talking star wars man there's going to be a shitload of stuff to talk about on our show before uh, about a week and a half before may 4th so that's what we're going to be talking about so it will be wednesday april 24th at 8 p.m eastern standard time guys we are always at 
our main locations every two weeks it is facebook it is youtube not just us but also the virtual cantina network and we have to thank them for putting up with us tonight because i really cursed a lot and i tried not to do that but i did tonight so i apologize for that but the facebook uh good lord aj what is with me tonight god damn right, it i got you i got yeah. you man let me take I this over so solo right. and then I'll, I'll do the final outro but solo yourself han solo yourself i i, I i'm cashed out <laughs> well the problem is i'm not the one on camera right now That's so it. let's let's fix Watch. that let's do it no 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 do it oh oh this is great okay so this is this is great for our audio viewers of course so um first off the next episode here's some topics so you can get uh, prepared for this we're going to be talking skeleton crew where the hell is it we're going to be talking about the story trailer for star wars outlaws the video game we're going to be talking about the one day release of the phantom menace back in theaters we're going to be talking about the one day movie marathon of the entire skywalker saga for may the 4th we're going to be talking about tales of the empire whether my brother likes it or not we have all these random loose ends of star wars that we have yet to discuss and we're going to talk all about it the week before may the 4th so make sure you tune in for that that is 8 p.m two weeks from tonight wednesday april 24th at 8 p.m eastern daylight time not Eastern Standard Time. We're in Daylight Savings now. Now, you can find us on all our socials. We are available at uh, NHC Podcast on Twitter. We are also, I, I, I locked up all, all the things. We're on Threads, NHC Podcast. We're on Blue Sky at NHC Podcast. We are on YouTube. Just look for the Nerf Herder Council. We are on Facebook. Just look for the Nerf Herder Council. You can find all of our swag at shop.nerfherdercouncil.com where you can customize your garments, your designs, your colors, all those sorts of things. And you know what? Because I'm feeling nice, if there's something up there that you like but isn't quite right, hit me up. Send us an email at nerfherdercouncil at gmail.com with show ideas or merch design ideas. Be happy to hook you up. No problem. You can always find us on Patreon. That's where all of our news updates go first. That is patreon.com forward slash NHC podcast. And we have two paying tiers for that but you don't have to pay us a dollar whatsoever just to get those news updates subscribe to us on patreon for free you'll have all the latest updates on there now if you pay for it one dollar a month will get you early audio access that means you're going to get the audio version of this episode on friday instead of sunday and if you pay us three dollars a month then you will get early audio access and a shout out on the show like our buddies mark thrasher and joseph wren who is appearing in the chat tonight so thank you so much for tuning into the show and we will hook you up. We've also got commentaries coming up. We've got all kinds of other ideas. We're going to be doing WTF Fridays for our Patreon subscribers, all kinds of stuff. So patreon.com forward slash NHC podcast is the best place to stay up to date on all of our stuff. And we have our main website as well, which frankly is less updated than the Patreon, because if you're going to pay for it, we're going to give you more stuff. So go to the Patreon. But if you want to just go straight to the website, it's www.nerfherdercouncil.com or just go to www.nhcpodcast.com if your fingertips are a little bit lazy and tired. Now, JT, do you have anything else to add before we sign off tonight? I do. I believe we have the VCN uh, show schedule coming up, AJ. Why don't you uh, tell the fine people what's coming up on the Virtual Cantina Network? I can do that, but first I have to upload it to StreamYard. So give me just, oh, I don't know, three whole seconds, and we'll be talking about that here. I just went through that whole monologue, right. and you couldn't do that? Yeah, I, it's incredible. So uh, we are currently midweek here, so thank you for tuning in to our Bad Batch Season 3 midseason review. Now, tomorrow night, if you haven't heard enough about the Bad Batch, specifically the episode that aired this week, the VCN Watch Along is happening on thursday that is 9 30 p.m eastern time 6 30 pacific uh they're going to be oh talking now it's eastern. watching yeah no. yep never mind so they're going to be watching all along with uh episode 12 today's episode of the bad batch then be sure you hit up the virtual cantina network again on friday because at 3 a.m eastern or midnight pacific the bad batch after show takes place and that is going to be discussing episode 12, of course, in retrospect. So you can watch along live to the episode tomorrow night on Thursday on the Virtual Cantina Network, and then come back on Friday to discuss it after you've had some time to process what you've seen. 
And then Sunday on the 14th at 11 a.m. Eastern or 8 a.m. Pacific, the Unifying Force. And it's going to be covering Tales of the Empire, the trailer review, and look ahead. So if you can't wait for our ideas and uh, synopsis of the Tales of the Empire trailer that dropped this week, then tune in Sunday to the Virtual Cantina Network. The Unifying Force has got you covered. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for another episode of the Nerf Herder Council. AJ, I apologize for cutting you off in your monologue. I thought you were about to say Eastern Standard Time because you specifically called out Eastern Daylight Time earlier, and I was like, damn it. Look. <laughs> so, sorry about that. I do Just owe you say one. Eastern. Don't worry about the Daylight Savings part. But it's I'm, so much I'm easier. I'm used to doing it, man. That's how I'm used <laughs> to doing it. So, uh, to all you guys in the chat, man, as always, Kale McLeish, Horsehead, Jeff Caffrey, uh, Chastity Crawley, great to see you. Thank you for tuning into my other show. Much appreciated. All you guys, Skip Ruckle, man, uh, Discuss Metal Joe, great to see you, brother. Much love to you guys. You guys in the chat, make the show go. We love having you guys here to help drive the conversation. Again, we are here every other Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As AJ said very eloquently, we will be here on Wednesday April 24th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll be talking all things Star Wars for May 4th. Guys, it was a blast. Here, man, here, here's to here's to hoping that you know the Bad Batch season three ends on a kick-ass high note. I think it will. I hope it will. I I can almost guarantee that it will. I this has been a great show, and I think it's going to be awesome going forward. So, um, what a great job! One more season so seven is anything to go by. Dave Filoni knows how to stick the landing. Yep, uh, perfect point. And you know what? Someone mentioned that in the chat earlier, so forgot to bring that one up. You are completely dead on. I did watch all of that season, and it is excellent. So, uh, guys, thank you so very much. As usual, we are brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash NHC for your 30-day trial and a free audiobook download if you are tuned in on youtube on our channel or the channel of the virtual cantina network don't forget to click that like button and that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so that you are notified every time we go live if you would like to get customizable nerf herder council swag meaning the chewbacca's family t-shirt come on you guys you know you want it go to shop.nerfherdercouncil.com and if you would like to get virtual cantina network swag just go to tpublic.com forward slash user forward slash virtual dash cantina guys we will see you in two weeks it is again wednesday april 24th at 8 p.m eastern standard time i am your host jt at dog pound jedi he is aj at drake adams 579 and we will catch you next time